Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, welcome to all of you out there in cyberspace and to those of you who were at our uh, Zoom program yesterday. Uh, I was overwhelmed and I don't think I'll ever stop thanking you within my mind for the lovely uh, offerings and the combined effect <clears throat> of all those deeply thoughtful devotees. Um, it was extraordinary um, in an in extremely positive way. So thank you, Hare Krishna. Here we are again, back in the, uh, which has become the uh, live studios of the daily readings of Prabhupada's books here in Hythe, uh, in Banaraman's little flat. Um, the haven. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave a very poetic glorification of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, not to be taken literally. We don't want anybody throwing out their Bhagavad Gita's or the Bhagavatam sets out the window uh, as a result of hearing this, but it's a poetic glorification and it's wonderful. It's found in Bhakti Bikash Swami's Sri Bhakti Siddhanta by Bhava in uh, 212. As he stood up after ending a lecture in Munjer, an earth tremor caused mild, mild flooding of the adjacent Ganga. The water soon receded, after which Srila Saraswati Thakur said, In due course, Mahapralaya, devastating floods, will indate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam. But under no circumstances, release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage. Because after it is subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinda <coughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So, after hearing the transcendental ecstasies of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's synopsis of the Anjalila. Now we continue with the Lord's pastimes in chapter 3. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stay at the house of Advaita Acharya. <clears throat> in his Amrita Pravaha Bhasha, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives the following summary of the third chapter. After accepting the sannyas order at Katwa, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled continuously for three days in Radhadesh and by the trick of Nityananda Prabhu eventually came to the western side of Shantipur. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was induced to believe that the river Ganges was the Yamuna. When he was worshipping the sacred river, Advaita Prabhu arrived at a, in a boat. 
Advaita Prabhu asked to take his Advaita Prabhu asked him to take his bath in the Ganges and took him to his to his Advaita, Advaita's house. There, all of Navadvip devotees, all the Navadvip devotees, along with Mother Shachi Devi, came to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This house was located at Shantipur. Mother Shachi, Mother Shachi Devi cooked for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, and at that time, there were many joking exchanges between Advaita Prabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. In the evening, there was a mass Sankirtan in the house of Advaita Prabhu, and Mother Shachi Devi gave Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu permission to leave. She requested him to make Jagannath Puri, Nilachala, his headquarters. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu granted his mother's request and followed by Nityananda, Mukunda, Jagadananda and, da and Damodar left Shantipur. Bidding farewell, bid, bidding farewell to Mother Shachi Devi, they all proceeded toward Jagannath Puri following the path of Chhatraboga. Text 1 After accepting the sannyas order of life, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of intense love for Krishna, wanted to go to Vrindavan. But apparently, by mistake, he wandered in the Radha Desh. Later, he arrived at Shantipur and enjoyed himself there with his devotees. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 2 All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Prabhu. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, headed by Srivas. Text 3 Text. Text 3 <clears throat> At the end of his 24th year in the month of Magh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order during the waxing period of the moon. 4. After accepting the sannyas order, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of intense love for Krishna, started for Vrindavan. However, he mistakenly wandered about in a trance continuously for three days in the tract of land known as Radha Desh. Purport. The word Radha Desh comes from the word Rashtra or state. <clears throat> from Rashtra, the corrupted word Radha has come. The part of Bengal on the western side of the Ganges is known as Radha Desh. Another name is Pondradesh or Pendodesh. The word Penda is corrupted from the word Pondra. It appears that the capital of Rashtra Desh was situated in that part of Bengal. Text 5. Now this Radha is not with a long A at the end. It's different than Radha. It's Radha, Radha Desh. Radha Desh. The long A, the short A at the end. <clears throat> Passing through the tract of land known as Radha Desh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cited the following verse in ecstasy. Text 6. Etang saastaya paratmanishdam adyashitam purvatramayar mahadbihi ahang tudishami durantaparam tamomakundangri nishevayaiva. As a Brahmanan from Avanti Desha, as a Brahmana from Avanti Desh said, I shall cross over the insurmountable ocean of nations by being firmly fixed in the service of the lotus feet of Krishna. This was approved 
by the previous Acharyas who were fixed in firm devotion to the Lord, Paramatma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. In connection with this verse, which is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.23.57, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that of the 64 items required for rendering devotional service, acceptance of the symbolic marks of, a, of, a sannyas, of sannyas is a regulative principle. If one accepts the sannyas order, his main business is to devote his life completely to the service of Makunda, Krishna. If one does not completely devote his mind and body to the service of the Lord, he does not actually become a sannyasi. It is not a, simply a matter of changing dress. In Bhagavad Gita 6.1, it is also stated, Anasritak karma palam karyam karma karotiyaha satsanyasi chiyogi cha one who works devotedly for the satisfaction of Krishna is a sannyasi. The dress is not sannyas, but the attitude of service to Krishna is. Mm. The word paratmanishta, mm. the word paratmanishta means being a devotee of Lord Krishna. Paratma, the Supreme Person, is Krishna. Ishvara, Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigraha. Those who are completely dedicated to the lotus feet of Krishna in service are actually sannyasis. As a matter of formality, the devotee accepts the sannyas dress as previous acharyas did. He also accepts the three dandas. Later, Vishnu Swami considered that accepting the dress of a tree dandi was Paramatma Nishta. Therefore, sincere devotees add another danda, the Jiva danda, to the three existing dandas. The Vaishnava sannyasi is known as a tree dandi sannyasi. The Mayavadi sannyasis accept only one danda, not understanding the meaning of tree danda. Later, many persons in the community of Shiva Swami gave up the Atma Nishta, devotional service of the Lord, and followed the path of Shankaracharya. Instead of accepting 108 names, those in the Shiva Swami Sampradaya follow the path of Shankaracharya and, and accept the ten names of sannyas. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the then existing order of sannyas, namely Ekadanda, he still recited a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam about the Tridanda sannyas accepted by the Brahmana of Avantipur. Indirectly, he declared that within that Ekadanda, one danda, four dandas existed as one. Accepting Ekadanda sannyas without Paratma Nishta, devotional service to Lord Krishna, is not acceptable to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In addition, according to the exact regulative principles, one should add the Jiva Danda to the Tri Danda. These four Dandas, bound together as one, are symbolic of unalloyed devotional service to the Lord. Because the Ekadandi Sannyasis of the Mayavad, Mayavad school are not devoted to the service of Krishna, they try to merge into the Brahman effulgence, which is a marginal position between material and spiritual existence. They accept this impersonal position as liberation. Mayavadi sannyasis, not knowing that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a Tridandi, think of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as an Ekadandi sannyasi. This is due to their vivarta, bewilderment. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no such thing as an Ekadandi sannyasi. Indeed, the Tridandi sannyasi is accepted as the symbolic representation 
of the sannyas order. By citing this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order recommended in Srimad Bhagavatam. The Mayavari sannyasis who are enamored of the external energy of the Lord cannot understand the mind of Sri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One moment. <clears throat> to date, <clears throat> all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu following in his footsteps accept the sannyas order and keep the sacred thread and tuft of unshaved hair. The Ekadandi sannyasis of the Mayavadi school give up the sacred thread and do not keep any tuft of hair. Therefore, they are unable to understand the purport of Tridandi Sannyasi, Tridandi, Tridanda Sannyas. And as such, they are not inclined to de dedicate their lives to the service of Mukunda. They simply think of merging into the existence of Brahman because of their disgust with material existence. The Acharyas who advocate the Daiva Varnashram, the social order of Chatur Varnyam mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, do not accept the, the proposition of Asura Varnashrama, which maintains that the social order of Varna is indicated by birth. The most intimate devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, namely Gadadhar Pandit, accepted Tridanda Sanyas, as also ex and also accepted Madhva Upajaya as his Tridandi Sannyasi disciple. It is said that from this Madhvacharya, the Sampradaya known in Western India as the Balabhacharya Sampradaya has begun. Srila Gopabhata Goswami, who is known as a Smrityacharya in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, later accepted the Tridanda Sanyas order from Tridandipad Prabodhananda Saraswati. Hmm. Although acceptance of Tridanda Sanyasi, Sanyas is not distinctly mentioned in the Gaudiya Vaishnava literature, in the first verse of Srila Rupa Goswami's Upatishamrita advocates that one should accept the Tridanda Sanyas order by controlling the six forces vacho vegam manasak krodha vegam jiva vegam udaropasta vegam etan vegan yo pishaheta dira sarvam apimam pritivim sishishat upanishami to one one who can one who can control the forces of speech mind anger belly tongue and genitals is known as a Goswami and is competent to accept disciples all over the world. The followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never accepted the Mayavad order of sannyas and for this they cannot be blamed. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted Sridhar Swami who was a Tridandi sannyasi but the Mayavadi sannyasis not understanding Sridhar Swami sometimes think that Sridhar Swami belonged to the Mayavad Ekadanda Sanyas community. Actually, this was not the case. I guess I have to send this to somebody. Remind me that last paragraph. Remind me I want to send that last paragraph to somebody. Thank you. <clears throat> Text 7. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approved the purport of this verse on account of the determination of the mendicant devotee to engage in the service of Lord Makunda. He gave his approval of this verse, indicating that it was very good. Text 8 The real meaning of, the, of accepting sannyas 
is to dedicate oneself to the service of Mukunda. By serving Mukunda, one can actually be liberated from the bondage of material existence. Purport. In this connection, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta in this connection, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order and, and recommended the determination of the Avantipur Bhikshu to engage in the service of Mukunda. He accepted the Brahmana's version due to his determination to serve Sri Chaitanya to serve Mukunda. The sannyasi dress is actually an attraction for material formality. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not like such formality, but he wanted the essence of it, service to Mukunda. Such determination in any condition is paratma nishta. That is required. The conclusion is that the sannyas order depends not on the dress, but the determination to serve Mukunda. Text 9 <clears throat> After accepting the sannyas order, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to go to Vrindavan and, en and engage himself wholly and solely in the service of Mukunda in a solitary place. Text 10 <clears throat> As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was en route and route to Vrindavan, all the ecstatic symptoms became manifest and he did not know in which direction he was going, nor did he know whether it was day or night. Text 11 When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went toward Vrindavan, Nityananda Prabhu, Chandrasekhar and Prabhu Mukunda followed him. Text 12. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed through Radhadesh, all those who saw him in ecstasy chanted Hari Hari along with him. As they chanted with the Lord, all their unhappiness of material existence diminished. Text 13. All the cowherd boys who saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passing joined with him and began to shout loudly, Hari, Hari. 14. When he heard all the cowherd boys also chanting, Hari, Hari, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased. He approached them, put his hand on their heads, and said, Go on chanting like this. Text 15. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then blessed them, all, saying that they were all fortunate. In this way he praised them and he felt very successful because they chanted the holy name of Lord Hari. 16. Calling all the boys in confidence and telling a reasonable story, Nityananda Prabhu instructed them as follows. 17. If Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ask you about the path to Vrindavan, please show him the path on the bank of the Ganges instead. 18 and 19 When the cowherd boys were questioned by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the path to Vrindavan, the boys showed him the path on the bank of the Ganges and the Lord went that way in ecstasy. Text 20 As the Lord proceeded along the path bank of the Ganges, Sri Nityananda Prabhu requested Acharya Ratna, Chandrasekhar Acharya, to go immediately to the home, to the house of Advaita Acharya. 21. Sri Nityananda Goswami told him, I shall take Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the bank of the Ganges at Shantipur, and Advaita Acharya should carefully stay there on shore with the boat. Text 22. After that, Nityananda Prabhu continued, I shall go to Advaita Acharya's house and you should go to Nabadweep and return with Mother Shachi and all the other devotees. Text 23. 
after ascending Acharya, after sending Acharya Ratna to the house of Advaita Acharya, Sri Nityananda Prabhu went before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and gave notice of his coming. Text 24 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in ecstasy and he asked where Nityananda Prabhu was going. Nityananda replied that he was going with him toward Vrindavan. 25 When the Lord asked Nityananda Prabhu how far, is, far, how far, is, how far it was to Vrindavan, Nityananda replied, Just see, here is the river Yamuna. 26. Saying this, Nityananda Prabhu took Chaitanya Mahaprabhu near the Ganges, and the Lord, in his ecstasy, accepted the river Ganges as the Yamuna. 27. The Lord said, Oh, what good fortune! Now I have seen the river Yamuna. Thus, thinking the Ganges to be the river Yamuna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to offer prayers to it. 28. O river Yamuna, you are the blissful spiritual water that gives love to the son of Nanda Maharaj. You are the same as the water of the spiritual world, for you can vanquish all our offenses and the sinful reactions incurred in life. You are the creator of all auspicious things for the world. O daughter of the sun god, kindly purify us by your pious activities. Report. This verse is recorded in the Chaitanya Chandrodaya Nataka 5.13 by Kavi Karnapur. <clears throat> 29. After reciting this mantra, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered obeisances and took his bath in the Ganges. At that time, he had, only, he had on only one piece of underwear but for there were there was no second garment. Text 30 While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was standing there without a second garment, Sri, Chaitanya, Sri Advaita Acharya arrived in a boat, bringing with him new underwear and external garments. Text 31 When Advaita Acharya arrived, he stood before the Lord and offered his obeisances. Seeing him, the Lord began to wonder about the entire situation. 32. Still in his ecstasy, the Lord asked Advaita Acharya, Why did you come here? How did you know that I was in Vrindavan? 33. Advaita Acharya disclosed the whole situation, telling Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. Now it is my great fortune that you have come to the bank of the Ganges. 34. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, Nityananda has cheated me. He has brought me to the bank of the Ganges and told me that it was the Yamuna. 35. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accused Nityananda of cheating him, Srila Advaita Acharya said, Whatever Nityananda Prabhu has told you, is not false. You have indeed just now taken your bath in the river Yamuna. Advaita Acharya then explained that at that spot the Ganges and Yamuna flow together. On the western side was the Yamuna and on the eastern side was the Ganges. Purport. The Ganges and Yamuna mix at the confluence at Alalhabad, Priyag, the Yamuna flows from the western side and the Ganges from the eastern and they merge. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed on the western side. He actually took his bath in the river Yamuna. Text 37 Advaita Acharya then suggested that since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken his bath in the river Yamuna and his underwear was now wet, the Lord should change his underwear for dry garments. Text 38. Advaita Acharya said, You have been fasting continuously for three days in your ecstasy of love for Krishna. 
I therefore invite you to my home where you may kindly take your alms. Come with me to my residence. 39. Advaita Prabhu continued, At my home I have cooked just one palm full of rice. The vegetables are always very simple. There is no luxurious cooking. Simply a little liquid vegetable and spinach. 40. Saying this, Sri Advaita Acharya took the Lord into the boat and brought him and brought the Lord to his residence. There, Advaita Acharya washed the feet of the Lord and was consequently very happy, <clears throat> very happy within. Text 40. All the eatables were first cooked by the wife of Advaita Acharya. Then, Srila Advaita Acharya personally offered everything to Lord Vishnu. Purport. This is the ideal householder's life. The husband and wife live together and the husband works very hard to secure a paraphernalia for worshipping Lord Vishnu. The wife at home cooks a variety of foods for Lord Vishnu and the husband offers it to the deity. After that, arati is performed and the prasadam is distributed amongst family members and guests. According to the Vedic principles, there must always be a guest in the householder's house. In my childhood, I have actually seen my father receive not less than four guests every day. And in those days, my father's income was not very great. Nonetheless, there was no difficulty in offering prasadam to at least four guests every day. According to Vedic principles, according to Vedic principles, a householder, before taking lunch, should go outside and shout very loudly to see if there, if, if, see if there is anyone without food. In this way, he invites people to take prasadam. If someone comes, the householder offers him prasadam, and if there is not much left, he should offer his own portion to the guest. If no one responds to his call, the householder can accept his own lunch. Thus, the householder's life is also a kind of austerity. Because of this, the householder's life is called the Grihastha Ashram. Although a, although a person may live with his wife and children happily in Krishna consciousness, he also observes the regulative principles followed in any temple. If there is no Krishna consciousness, the, the householder's abode is called a Grihamedi's house. Householders in Krishna consciousness are actually Grihastas, that is, those living in the ashram with their families and children. Sri Advaita Prabhu was an ideal Grihasta, and his house was the ideal Grihasta ashram. 42. All the prepared food was divided into three equal parts. One part was arranged on a metal plate for offering to Lord Krishna. Purport. The word badaila means increased is very significant in this verse. It is a sophisticated word used by the grahastas in Bengal. Whenever food is prepared and we take away a portion, the food is actually decreased. But here, it is the system to say padhaila, or increased. If food is prepared for Krishna and offered to him and the Vaishnavas, the stock is increased, never decreased. 43. On the three divisions, one was arranged on a metal plate and the other two were arranged on plantain leaves. These leaves were not bifurcated and they were taken from a banana tree that held at least 32 bunches of bananas. The two plates were filled very nicely with the kinds of food described below. 44. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, all the cooks can take notes. <clears throat> Text 44. The cooked rice was a stack of very fine gra grains, nicely cooked, and in the middle was yellow clarified butter from the milk of cows. Surrounding the stack of rice <clears throat> were pots made of the skins of banana trees, and in these pots were varieties of vegetables and mung dal. Text 45. Among the cooked vegetables were patolas, squash, manakachu, and a salad made with pieces of ginger and various types of spinach. <clears throat> Text 46. There was sukta, bitter melon mixed with all kinds of vegetables, defying the taste of nectar. There were five types of bitter and pungent suktas. 47. Amongst the various vegetables were newly grown leaves of nim trees fried with eggplant. The fruit known as patola was fried with pulabadi, a kind of dal preparation, first mashed and then dried in the sun. There was also a preparation known as Kushmanda Manchachaki. Kushmanda Manachaki. Purport. We request our editors of cook of cookbooks. We request our editors of cookbooks to add all these nice preparations described by the experienced author Srila Kabiraj Goswami. Text forty eight. The preparation made with coconut pulp mixed with curd and rock candy was very sweet. There was a curry made of banana flowers and squash boiled in milk, all in great quantity. 49. There were small cakes in sweet and sour sauce and five or six kinds of sour preparations. All the vegetables were so made that everyone present could take prasadam. Text 50. There were soft cakes made with mung dal, soft cakes made with ripe bananas, and soft cakes made with urad dal. There were various kinds of sweetmeats, condensed milk mixed with rice cakes, a coconut preparation, and every kind of cake desirable. <coughs> 51. All the vegetables were served in pots made of banana leaves taken from trees producing at least 32 bunches of bananas. These pots were very strong and big and did not tilt or totter. Text 52. All around the three eating places were a hundred pots filled with various kinds of vegetables. Text 53. Along with the various vegetables was sweet rice mixed with ghee. This was kept in new earthen pots. Earthen pots filled with highly condensed milk were placed in three places. 54. Besides the other preparations, they were chipped rice made with milk and mixed with bananas and also white squash boiled in milk. Indeed, it is not possible to describe all the preparations that were made. 55. In two places, there were earthen pots filled with another preparation made with yogurt. Sandesh, a, a, sweet, meat, a sweet meat made with yogurt <coughs> and banana. I am unable to describe it all. Text 56. Upon the stack of boiled rice and all the vegetables were flowers of the tulsi trees. There were also pots filled with scented rose water. Text 57. There were three sitting places where the soft cloths where soft cloths were placed. <clears throat> Thus, Lord Krishna was offered all the food, and the Lord took it very pleasantly. Text 58. 
It is the system, after offering food, to perform Bhoga Arati. Advaita Prabhu asked the two brothers, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda and Nityananda Prabhu, to come see the Arati. The two lords and all others present went to see the Arati ceremony. Text 59 After Arati was performed for the deities in the temple, Lord Krishna was made to lie down to rest. Advaita Acharya then came out to submit something to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 60 Sri Advaita Prabhu said, My dear lords, kindly enter this room. The two brothers, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, then came forward to take the prasadam. 61. When Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu went to accept the prasadam, they both called Mukunda and Haridas to come with them. However, Mukunda and Haridas both with folded hands, spoke as follows. When Mukunda was called for, he submitted, My dear sir, I have something to do that is not yet finished. Later, I shall accept the prasadam. So you two Prabhus should now please enter the room. 63. Haridas Thakur said, I am the most sinful and lowest among men. Later, I shall eat one palm, palmful of prasadam while waiting outside. <laughs> Purport Although the Hindus and Muslims lived together in a very friendly manner, still there were distinctions between them. The Muslims were considered yavanas or, or low-born and whenever a Muslim was, was invited he would be fed outside of the house. Although personally called for by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu to take prasadam with them, still, out of a great humility, Haridas Thakur submitted, I shall take the prasadam outside of the house. Although Haridas Thakur was an exalted Vaishnava, accepted by Advaita Acharya, Nityananda Prabhu, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, nonetheless, in order to not disturb social tranquility, he humbly kept himself in the position of a Muslim, outside the jurisdiction of the Hindu community. Therefore, he proposed to take prasadam outside the house. Although he was an exalted, although he was an exalted, in an exalted position and equal to other great Vaishnavas, he considered himself a papishta, a most sinful man, and adama, the lowest among men. Although a Vaishnava be, may be very advanced spiritually, he keeps himself externally humble and submissive. I'll repeat that please with the permission of the assembled sages. The assembled sage. Although a Vaishnava may be very spiritually advanced, he keeps himself externally humble and submissive. Text 64. <clears throat> Advaita Acharya <clears throat> took Lord Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu within the room, and the two lords saw the arrangement of the prasadam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was especially very pleased. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was pleased because he saw how nicely so many varieties of food were prepared for Krishna. Actually, all kinds of prasadam are prepared for Krishna, not for the people. But the devotees partake of prasadam with great pleasure. Text 65 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approved of all the methods employed in cooking and, offered, and offering food to Krishna. Indeed, he was so pleased that, that he said, Frankly, I will personally take the lotus feet of anyone who can offer Krishna such nice food and place those lotus feet on my head, birth after birth. 66. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the room, 
He saw three divisions of food and he knew that all of these were meant for Krishna. However, he did not understand the intentions of Advaita Acharya. Purport. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur states that one of these servings was offered in a metal dish and was meant for Krishna, whereas the other two were placed on big banana leaves. The offering on the metal plate was personally offered by Advaita Acharya to Krishna. The other two servings and banana leaves were to be accepted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. That was Advaita Acharya's intention, but he did not disclose this to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the food offered in three places, he thought that all of it was meant for Krishna. And now I'm going to stop here. Uh, yesterday was so intense and I chanted 64 rounds and had five hours of nectar associating with the devotees. And this morning I was only able to to chant only but seven of my rounds, chanted 25 rounds, and I have to finish my rounds this evening. So I'm going to stop here and I have a deadline of when I can stop altogether and that's 8.10. That's 12 minutes from now. So I offer the floor or the mic or the device or whatever it is that you're responding on to all of you out there in cyberspace. Please uh, decorate our ears with your reflections. Hare Krishna. Comments from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Sudevi Dasi. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Twa text 12, where it reads As they chanted with the Lord, all the unhappiness of material existence diminished. Like this wonderful effect of associating with his daily reading and chanting, problems of my life do not weigh as much as before. Mm. It's welcomed relief. Krishna consciousness is the safest place to be. Thank you. Absolutely, and thank you for your lovely offering and for your devoted uh, hearing. I know that you're there every, every session and you always express such wonderful sentiments and believe me, not only Krishna is listening, but all and Prabhupada is listening. But all the devotees are also listening. Hare Krishna. So you're getting the uh, benefit of pleasing all those devotees. Hare Krishna. There are quite a few short comments. Fine. Of Brian Phillips. Hare Krishna, Brian. Brian. He says, Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hare Bo. Daityari Hari Das says, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Bo, Daityari Das. Gopal Roy Das says, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yesterday's program was wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Gopal. You helped make it wonderful. Uh, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Hare Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Blessed to be with you. Hare Krishna, thank you. And uh, Saloni Sachi Sundari. Saloni Sachi Sundari. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Happy birthday to you. May Lord bestow his mercy for a long life so that we can have the nectar of your daily readings. Thank you very much. I will take it and relish it and embrace it. My desire too. And from Indra Nuja Das. 
Hare Krishna and Nuji Das. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I'm sorry for the delay. Just want to say happy birthday f- to you with many, many more to come. Thank you so much. It's a real honor and privilege to share the same birth date with you. Hare Krishna, your servant, Engineer Jadas. Really? Was that the sun? The, the calendar, solar calendar, or the or the uh, uh, Vedic calendar? Maybe he'll tell me later. Naresh Yadav says, Hare Krishna. And, and by the way, uh, happy birthday to Indonesia from me, Hare Krishna. And Naresh Yadav says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Naresh Yadav. Yadav. Please accept my humble obeisances. Glory to Sri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. And Ekendra Das. Hare Krishna Ekendra Prabhu. Says, All glory to your service, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay, that's th- thank you so much. Uh, I will retire now and finish my rounds and get ready for another day of devotional service. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. And uh, may this reading, daily readings, last for a long time. And in 10 years at least, maybe more, who knows. It's up to Krishna. But as long as I live, Hare Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol. Sama Veda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Acharya. All glories to Haridas Thakur. All glories to Makunda Das and Chandrika Chikasharya and all of the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. See you tomorrow night. Same place, same station, same time. Gaur Premanandi Hari Thank you. See you tomorrow.